Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So today one very important chapter we are going to talk about Cypress interception. How will you, how can you uh, spy and stub the network request in the response? We will see various examples. So if you see, this is the documentation for Cypress uh, intercept. This is a, a new method. They added, uh, I think Cypress uh, five onwards and from Cypress uh, six onwards, sorry. And Cypress six onwards, CY route and uh, CY server uh, got deprecated. That's why you can see cy.intercept is a successor to cy.route. So from earlier versions also cy.route was already there to stub and uh, intercept the network. But now we have to use a more advanced versions and more capabilities are introduced in interception. This is a very simple syntax you can use for a spying purpose. Let's see cy.intercept. You can spy the specific endpoint URL which HTTP method along with the URL, you can uh, write your route matcher also. We'll take certain examples like that. If you really want to uh, provide some static response, response uh, stubbing also, you want to uh, do that. So that also, these are the number of methods they have given, right? And then uh, spying dynamic and stubbing fixture also you can add it. So for example, let's see if you take this example, this is simple cy.intercept. This is my endpoint. Uh, forward slash users. This is my uh, from the endpoint. This is my path parameter. It means whenever I'm calling the user API or get user API, uh, this parameter or this path parameter will be called. And then I'm going to this is what interception that I have created. And then I wondered, okay, this interception should uh, return me something. For example, this is a mock or a stub that you have created. It should return whenever someone is calling the user API. It should give you 201. And in the response body, it should give you Peter Pan or some JSON string or fixture. Also, you can pass it like that. So this is the basic stuff. And how can you use in testing In testing? Uh, this is very, very uh, important. Uh, there are a number of use cases. For example, let's say this is your UI. In this UI, uh, you want to click on this button. And after clicking on button, number of users are getting displayed. Or well, let's see number of post API is there number of post or number of users are getting displayed over here. This is the user button. So when you click on this button and the user button, there are no certain APIs are available right now, but you have to test your application. And for that, what exactly you will do, you will create a mock or you will create a stub over here. So this is my stub. This is a stub for, let's say this is stub for user. And this is stub I have created for the post. It means whenever I'm calling through the intercept, so I'll be using cy.intercept method here. And then I'll create two stubs, stub number one for post and step number two for user. Whenever I'm calling this, uh, it will give you one fake response here. So you can fulfill, you can use this particular response and then you can uh, use this response in your uh, uh, test over here. So whatever the test that you are writing and whatever the JSON response I'm getting it over here, you can use this particular data like that. And later on, once this particular uh, actual API is available. You can replace this with this actual API later on. So this is how mocking this is called uh, mocking is done. This is called stub. This is also called the spying the request like that. How to use that? Let's take some various examples now. So we will take this example first. You just uh, go to JSON placeholder. Okay, just go to this site. This is the JSON placeholder for the free fake APIs. And here you can see JSON placeholder uh, typecode.com or something like this here. Let's see what exactly I'm going to do that. You just, uh, if you click on this post, right, this is a post link and let me just, uh, inspect that and I'll go to the network call and uh, simple click on it here. You can see that. Okay. This is the post call. Make sure that you have selected uh, all, and this is my XML HTTP request where I'm sending the request like that. So this is my main. Uh, endpoint and then I'm passing it to the post. So this is my post parameter and this is the response that I'm getting it. You can see it's a huge JSON response. I'm getting it. So when I click on it, right? So what if I want to, I want to generate my own response so I can mock it. I can stub it on this particular endpoint. So let's see how to do that. Okay. So I'm going to do one thing. I'll create a under my API test or under integration. Uh, let's create a new folder. The folder name is let's see uh, interception and under interception i'm going to create one file let's see this is my api intercept.js file and then i'm going to create some first describe 
okay this is my sweet name my first eight block that i'm going to write and then first i'm going to visit cy dot uh, visit i'm so this is a url after that i'm going to write cy dot intercept method see this intercept method is available and this intercept method i'm going to say fine that you have to intercept with what you have to intercept with let me just uh, create an object for intercept that your path I'm going to use it and the path is what the path is post right guys post you can see this is the exact uh, post path that we are using it here you can check it in the console this is my header and this is the so this is first i'm going to visit this particular url i'm going to click on this particular uh, post so this is my post endpoint i could say that or post path parameter i'm going to use it with this service url so i'm going to say okay fine you whenever someone is uh, calling this particular post right so let's see this is only simple example i have taken and then you can create one alias so let's see one as you can use it just like a nickname you want to give you can give a simple nickname let's see this is my post so that the same name i can use it for this interception object then what exactly i'm going to do that i'm going to use cy dot get method just to inspect the element so i'm going to click on it right so let's uh, click on this element and this is i can say that okay yeah a post is available so i can quickly create one uh, css selector here so i'll do one thing i'll start with the table and then I'll be writing nth of type. I'm going to create one CSS over here. Nth of type, go to the first table. And from this first table, you go to a link over here. So I simply write one link here. Hey, okay. So which link? Where the link href is equal to this. So I'll put that where href. I'm going to create simple CSS, guys. Post here. Okay. So this is presenting this one. I'm going to click on this on the basis of CSS selector. So this is my CSS selector that I have written. Okay. And then I have to do a dot click here. So let's click on this particular button or this particular link. So see what happens guys. When you click on this link, I'll go to my network tab. And uh, when I'm clicking on it, this post API is getting called. And for this, I'm getting this response over here on the console and see this the same response. You are getting it here as well. So let's spy this, right? Because the intercept object, I've already used it. So what exactly I'm going to do that I'm going to wait. So I'll put a wait over here and I'm going to use wait for what wait at the rate, the nickname that you have used in this post. I'm going to wait for it. And from this particular wait, I'm going to take the response now. So let's say I'm storing inside the response object and from this end response object, or let's see by enter object that whatever object that name you want to use it. And from there with this particular enter object, I want you print this entire object. So I'll write that. Okay, fine. This is my JSON dot string file and uh, whatever the enter object that I have captured first, you print it on the console. Same thing. Let's say I can uh, print with the console dot log also. So I can write you print it on the console log as well. Okay. First, let's see it is really working or not. Intercept folder is there. Let's click on it and let's run. So here you can see awesome. See, can you see that this is the object that got created that we have created the nickname. You click on it and then you can see that this is a response that I'm printing it on the console. It means I have already stubbed and this is a stub that is available over here. That is your route matcher. This is the post stub that you have created. Alias you have given as post and this is the first route that we have created. You can say stub also or one route also you can say that. So whenever I'm using this particular a route i'll be getting this response here now if you see that on the console what you can do you simply right click on it and let's go to inspect let's see the browser console in the browser console you can see that uh, just click on this object and here you can see yeah i'm getting see i'm getting the response here under response body and there are 100 objects are available 19 and objects are available so let's see if we really want to write one assertion also that you can simply write it here and I'll go to my enter. I'll write enter dot go to response dot from response where from see this response dot body. So I'll write response dot uh, body and then it should have the length. So I simply write two dot it and the length should be equal to 100. So this is another assertion that I have written and let's see it is working or not. 
So you can see that assertion is absolutely fine. The length is equal to 100. Perfect. Okay. So this is a very simple. This is called the, I have written the test API with the simple intercept or I would say center intercept stubbing. Now let's take some more example. How exactly you are going to create a mock and then I'll say, okay, fine that uh, first you see dot visit. So I'll just write the same thing over here. See dot visit. And then I'm going to create one intercept. So for example, let's see why dot intercept. And then in this particular intercept guys, I can quickly create that. Okay. I want to create one mock for get call. Okay. And then for which API, it means whenever you are getting, someone is calling the post, uh, for the post API, this means the uh, get post API that I'm calling it. And then what you return. So you can return a static response also. For example, let's see, I want to return that, uh, total post that you return five posts that you return. So this is the object that I have uh, created like this. Let's see total uh, post and then it should be five like that. Okay. So this is what I have created one intercept. Whenever someone is uh, calling this uh, post, I mean the get all post API, then it will return total post equal to five in the response. In the previous example, we were getting the response, actual response that is count is equal to hundred. But now I have manipulated the response. It should give you one single JSON object like this total colon five. Okay. So let's see, this is uh, working or not. So I'll do one thing. I'll simple again, call this particular, I'll do one thing. I'm going to create one alias also. So alias is that I'm writing it's a post and uh, let's see it is working or not. Okay. So I'll simple write it dot only. It means execute only this test and simple save it and then come over here. Awesome. See, this is absolutely working fine. You can see one route that we have created with the post. And uh, here you can see that uh, it's giving you the response. Can you see that? Right? This is the response I'm getting. Let's write C5 dot wait also and wait for what? At the rate post. Okay. So let's run it again and then click on it. And then you just simple come over here. Now let's see the response in the response body. I'm getting only total equal to five. This is the JSON object that I'm getting it. Can you see that? It means I have mocked one API that is your get post API. I have get post means I'm not talking about HTTP post. I'm talking about the API name is get all post like that. So instead of giving you hundred response, I'm just giving only total response equal to one. So this is absolutely working fine here. We can see that. Okay. Yeah. Total post equal to five is coming properly. Now, if you want to add some more attributes in the response that also you can do it. So what you can do is that, for example, let's see this total five. And then I want to pass that, uh, that name should be equal to I'm writing, let's see some string Naveen and that's it. That should be the response. So this time I'm getting two response here. So let's go there and then check. Can you see that here? See, I'll just show you, just click on this at the rate post, go to ID and then check the response, check the body, In the response body. We are getting name Naveen and total post five. So this is also absolutely working fine. So this is my mock response that I have created. And then uh, I can simple wait, I can use it and then I can get the response and then I can use in my uh, test case for the further process. So this is what, let's see, for example, tomorrow post API is not available. So you can simple intercept it. You can create a mock and then get the response, get the fake response and then use it in your, in your script, right? So this is called mocking with intercept, uh, intercept test with, I'll say a static response because this is a standard response, hard coded static response. We are getting it. So every time, whenever you're calling this, you will always get uh, this response object. Now let's create one more, some more. What if I want to fetch uh, the data from the fixtures? So with the, I would say a dynamic fixture, it means mocking the interface with dynamic fixture. So we know that, okay, we have a fixture folder where you can, uh, uh, you know, maintain your test data here. So let's say create user.json. So this is a JSON object I want to get from my API. So how will you do that? You simple come over here. For example, let's see, I simple write that uh, instead of this, remove this static response. What you can do it here. You can write your own, you can give your fixture. So I'll write that. Okay. Yeah. This is my fixture object and the fixture object you pass. What, what is your fixture name? 
a fixer name is create user dot json file okay and then you click on it wait for this particular object and then let's see it is working or not so let me just remove only i just want to execute this test so apply only here save it and then check so this is run and uh, here can you see that i hope you can just see it over here can you see the response what is the response from the fixture that we are passing name equal to test automation labs gender female email and all such things exactly same response uh, we are passing from the create user dot json from here so this is also you can do it this is such a nice example for a dynamic fixture or if you really want to avoid the hard coded value and the data is coming from the fixture you can apply your you can give your fixture in the form of json as well so this is also absolutely working fine and then you can um, check in the console just click on this object and then come over here and then this is the response i'm getting it in the body see this this is what i'm getting it right so just manipulate your response accordingly and validate that so you can you can say this is my faked data response or fake user response i'm getting it and use it in your script so on the fly you can create it and then start using it okay so this is how you can create a you can spy you can create a stub and then you can mock your APIs and get the response like that. Okay, so certain examples, you can easily check it and then you can practice. This is something very straightforward, very simple in Cypress. And uh, it will be really helpful when the APIs are not available and still you want to perform your end-to-end -end test cases. In that case, you can simple, uh, simply use these things over here. Okay, so that's all for uh, interception, mocking and stubbing. I hope it's clear now. And share the Git repository URL in the description in the first comment. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.